Okay, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to teach about how to use tempera paint. So tempera paint, um, we're doing liquid tempera, so that's the kind that's runny. It comes right out of the jug. Um, so if you spill this, it's quite messy. Tempera paint is a very old kind of paint. Um, they used to use it hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And they used to make it by mixing it with eggs, believe it or not. Um, and basically when you use temper paint you just want to be prepared you want an apron you want a placemat you want your paper um, you're going to need a paint palette of some sort never pump too much paint because you really don't need a lot to get you going you can always go back and get more you need a bucket of water and i like to use a sponge when i paint as well and i'll teach you what all these are for okay so temper paint this is washable paint so if you get it on you it comes off if you get it on um, your clothes it should come off pretty well but you always just want to be safe get that apron on okay so I've just pumped a, um, the colors into my paint palette and my placemat to block my table and I just want to show you different kinds of brushes you can use as you paint so with liquid temper you can really use almost any kind of brush um, so these for instance this one and this one these have soft kind of bristle hair this one has rough bristle hair. So I like these if I'm working on a bigger surface or if I'm mixing a lot. And I like these if I'm working a little smaller and I have to be a little more delicate with my line. All right, so this is like a square top brush. It's flat. So when you paint with this, it makes a nice smooth line. Now whenever you paint, you always want to make sure you drag that paintbrush. You never want to push it or scooch it because you can see the hair gets pulled back and that's what ruins a brush. Okay, so let me just kind of show you if I work quickly. You can see that temper paint can give you globs. Okay, so this is a definite kind of look. If you don't want the globby look, which not always do we want the globby look, sometimes we want a nice smooth look. So what you do is you just keep going over it and over it to make it smooth and that will make it nice and pretty okay so this is how this brush works so I'll just rinse that this is your stiff bristle brush this will give you a fatter mark okay same thing it'll get gloopy smooth it out Um, you can use tiny brushes to get into like little details. That way you have a bit more control. Instead of trying to get a big fat brush into a small space. And especially when you work with these tiny details, please, you don't need a lot of paint. Not at all. The goal is we never want to be wasteful because art supplies can be expensive. Okay, so you got the idea there. Um, these are really nice brushes. These are round brushes. And I like these because you can use the side of them to get like a bigger mark. And then you can just use the tip of them to kind of get into your smaller areas. So these are very versatile brushes. These are good brushes for watercolor paints as well because they're soft haired. So that's this brown brush here. Okay. All right. So now I just want to show you, this is a blue paint that I painted last night. So it's had the opportunity to dry. Um, I'm going to show you if I paint a different color on top of it, what happens. So let me paint like a red on top of it. So if you can see, you can paint on top of a dried color, but it's never going to become exactly what you want. You can layer and layer and layer, but it's never going to be quite there, okay? So um, if you mess up, you can paint over it, but it won't look as pure as it would if you did it correctly the first time. But the other thing you can do is let's say you have this blue, but you want it to be even smoother. You want it to be like a nice flat flat blue 
then you can take the blue again and after it's dry you can paint over it again and make it nice and smooth and flat. Okay, so that will really enhance your work if you do that kind of stuff and smooth it all out. All right. Um, now let me show you. So the reason I have a sponge is once I take my brush out of my water, after you rinse it, you want to dab it onto the sponge to get the water out of it. Because if you have a lot of water on your brush, it's going to make your paint watery. So I'll just dip it here. Okay, and I want you to notice how watered down that looks. Okay, when it's mixed with water, it's going to be thinner and it's not going to be easy to control. So that's why you want to have your sponge, get the water off delicately, then pick up your color. And it's going to be a lot easier to work with. It won't be as runny. Okay, This stuff will just start to move around on you, especially if you're trying to color in a really tiny space. It's hard to do it if your paintbrush is full of water. So temper paint, you don't want really a lot of water on your brush, so it's a little different from um, watercolor paints. Okay. Where watercolor, you definitely want water on your brush because that's the only way you can get the paint to work. Tempera, you don't need any water. You can just dip a dry brush right into the paint. All right, the other thing you can do with tempera is you can mix your colors. So I can mix my blue with my yellow, swirl gently, and you can see I've created green. So you can mix. Okay? Also create lights and darks with temper paint by mixing. So I could take this green, take a little bit of white, swirl, and I've created a light green. This is called a tint of green. It's a tint, that's when you get lighter. And you can keep adding more white to get lighter. Okay, and then you can also get darker. So I could take this green and black and mix. These are basics of temper paint. So when you're done, you have to clean your palette, put it onto the drying rack. I like to just stick it under the sink and get all the paint out. I even just use my thumb sometimes if I can't find a rag or a sponge or anything. I just use my thumb, get it out. It's washable, so it doesn't matter. You gotta rinse your brushes. They go back into the correct bin, hair facing up. And then we just set our sponges in the bucket to dry. And then you can wipe down your placemat with a wet paper towel. Don't get it too wet. You just wanna get your little spots up. And then if it's really wet, get a dry paper towel, dry it off. Otherwise, these like to stick together. Okay, so these are the basics of tempera paint. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you about tempera paints. Um, you can use black Sharpie to outline your shapes before you paint them in. Sometimes the tempera paint will cover up the black Sharpie just a little bit. So what I like to do is after the paint's dry, I just take the Sharpie and I go right back over it to darken those lines up a bit. So this is a color wheel that I did with tempera. I mix the colors, use black Sharpie to outline. So that's another option. Okay, so I wanted to show you, this is a painting that I started, um, and it's dry, and so once it's dry, <clears throat> you can start painting over things a little bit more. So it's depending on the color choices, obviously, it's, it's going to uh, matter on how well it shows up, but it will be able to show up at least a little bit. So this is me painting a lighter color on top of a darker color. So I'm painting a tint of blue, so that's a light blue, on top of like a regular blue. And you can see that's showing up pretty well. And I'm just doing small marks, kind of doing it like a Van Gogh kind of style. To make it look like wind. Um, so you can play with that. 
it's also important to layer colors sometimes. So I'm going to make some like hay. So I'm going to make a shade of yellow. So that's yellow mixed with black. And then I'll just take some black and layer it in there with it as I go. So that way you don't have to wait for things to dry before you put any new color into it. You can kind of just work all at the same time. And then from there you can make your decisions. Okay, well I can't get any lighter there, so maybe I do need to wait until that dries to get lighter. Or if you like it like that, you keep it like that. Um, it's a lot of just decision making on the process. Luckily, temper paints don't take very long to dry. So if you need to paint over something, you can. Um, but things like yellows, it will be hard to get a yellow back on top of a darker color, just because yellow is such a light color and it's a thin color. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to make some shadows under here. And I'm just kind of really playing around with this just to kind of show you how these paints work. So can take a brush and add birds in the sky. Just right on top of your paint. <clears throat> okay, the next thing I wanted to show you is um, what you can do with a stipple brush and temper paint. So this is a stipple brush. It's real coarse, real hard um, hair. You can be a little rough with this. Obviously, you never want to be too rough. But what this is, so these are good for stenciling. So you can pick a color to stencil with, and you dab. And then you get a mark. Um, these are also good, I really like to use the stipple brush to create clouds or trees. So I'll do kind of like a fall sort of tree here, so I'll use some red. And then what I do is I dip it just right into the next color. And it's usually a color that's next to it on the color wheel. So red and then orange here. And then when uh, you can kind of mix as you go. So you're creating this sort of red-orange kind of color. And then I'll take some yellow. And I just think these are really, really pretty. And then obviously, you know, you could paint or draw your trunk of your tree blah 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 okay so that's a stipple brush um, you still obviously want to rinse these you're gonna to have to rinse a little longer because they're very very thick 